Friends and family, good morning and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church. Welcome to our Mass today. Today is uh, the 19th of October and we celebrate the memorial of Saints John de Brebeuf and Isaac Jogues, priests and companions. They're all martyrs. May we never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the word of the cross is the power of God to us who have been saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Friends, as we are gathered today to celebrate this Eucharist, we call to mind our sins and our failures. And we ask the Lord to grant us pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who chose to manifest the blessed hope of your eternal kingdom, by the, toil, by the toil of Saints John D. Brebeuf, Isaac, Jogues, and their companions, and by the shedding of their blood, graciously grant through their intercession, the faith of Christians may be strengthened day by day. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. If by that one person's transgression the many died, how much more do the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? For if by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression condemnation came upon all, so through, the, through one righteous act acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of one man the many were made sinners, so through the obe obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. Where sin increased, grace overflowed all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through justification for eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, behold, I come. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me. To do your will, O oh my God, is my delight and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. May all who seek you exalt and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say ever, the Lord be glorified. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
be vigilant at all times and pray that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Dear friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. In today's gospel, Jesus advises us to live with a constant readiness for a great event which is sure to come, that is, his return as our master. His directive, using images from the culture of his times, is that we are to gird our loins, that is, to tuck in our loose garments as for work or for travel, and light our lamp so that we can see him coming and see what needs to be done in preparation for him. These images convey the need for vigilance and readiness. We are to be fully dressed and ready to respond, prepared to welcome the Lord even in the, in the darkest moments of night, in the second or third watch when we are most likely to fall asleep. We can think of the Lord's coming both in the sense of his return at the end of time and in the sense of his breaking into our lives at any time of any day. Indeed, he is coming to us right now as we ponder his words. But what is really striking in today's gospel is how Jesus would be treating us if he finds us girding our loins and lighting our lamps. First, he says, he will gird himself and have them recline at table. In short, the master will serve the servant. So when he finds us vigilant when he arrives, we can look forward to being treated with amazing kindness and humility. Isn't that astounding? How can you imagine such a treatment from our Lord? It may even make us uncomfortable to think of Jesus lowering himself to serve us when we have done no more for him than stay awake. We remember probably the reaction of Peter when Jesus washed his feet and the, and the feet of all the other disciples. You will never wash my feet, Peter says. But Jesus insists on serving his servants, not to humiliate us, but in order to reveal the self-emptying love of God. There is no limit to God's willingness to humble himself for our sake. And secondly, Jesus continues, he will proceed to wait on them. Again, this is astounding. Imagine that Jesus, our master, waiting for us on the table. No human master would wait on his servants, no matter how faithfully they awaited his return. At the most, he might give them a special bonus or some good things, but to reverse the roles and act as servant to his own servants? We won't expect that from any human master. But Jesus would do such a thing for those whom he finds vigilant at his arrival. Indeed, a sign of great humility, which is not surprising to us anymore because we remember at the cross, he laid down his own life for us. But in all these, we are encouraged to be vigilant all the more. For we know what awaits us. And we can, we can anchor our hopes on this amazing revelation of divine love. We do not have to live in fear of our condemnation. Because we know God is always on our side. Amen.
As we celebrate and live our faith this day, we now offer our petitions to God who always listens with compassion. That the church's leaders and people may reflect the mercy and compassion of Christ each day, bringing healing and hope to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are appointed to the leadership of nations and of peoples will embrace humility and follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit for the good of all the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick may be blessed with compassion and renewal, and they may be granted healing of the bodies as well as of their spirits, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that those who have died may be forever blessed in the peace of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now in the silence of our hearts, we offer to the Lord our personal prayers and petitions. God of mercy, help us to recognize your love in our daily lives. And follow the path of your son, Jesus Christ, the way that leads us to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share in the divinity of Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you for the divine, and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may I sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. And so pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we venerate the passion of your martyrs, John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogues, and companions, grant that through this sacrifice, O Lord, we may proclaim worthily the death of your only begotten Son, who, not content with encouraging the martyrs by word, strengthened them likewise by example, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alberto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, your martyrs, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, what the Savior is commanded and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, my dear friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by the example of blessed John de Brebeuf, Isaac, Joseph, and companions, we may bear in our hearts the marks of your son's charity and suffering and ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and keep you and protect you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace. Live your faith. Thanks be to God.